Andrea Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Sophia Lorena. Unlike the vast majority of 18-year-olds or 19-year-olds who graduate from high school, you did not just head to college, right? Yeah. How come? So the biggest reason for me was it was kind of a gut feeling for me. Like it was like, I feel like if I were to make this decision and I were to go, it wouldn't be for me. It would be for someone else. And I knew that if I went, I would end up thinking like, why did I go if I really didn't want to? So that was the biggest reason for me is because I knew I love hands-on experience. I love to actually experience things with people and actually learn by doing. So I knew the best way for me to learn was just to jump straight into the industry that I wanted to go into. And I just knew like, this is going to be the best way for me. Also, I really didn't want to get into debt. (laughs) So I was like, I really can't, I really don't want to do that decision so early on, especially if I don't feel like I'm going to utilize it. I feel like if it's something where you want to be like a doctor or dentist or something where you really need that degree, I understand it. But for my position and what I saw myself doing, I didn't think I needed a degree to get there. So you went to Palos Verdes Peninsula High School in LA, is that right? Yeah, so it's in Palos Verdes. Oh, I guess but it's about it's, a, yeah, it's about an hour away from LA. Okay, so in California, yeah, about an hour outside of LA. What percentage of your class did what you did? Decided college is not for me. Well, I was kind of the oddball. I've always been the oddball, but most of the people that I was talking to, they were going so. I don't really know too many that made the same decision as me because most of them were already planning where they were going to go, planning what degree they were going to get. So it was kind of, even at the graduation, it was kind of like expected. So it was definitely a school that was very like, they expected you to go to college. They expected you to do a certain path and kind of doing anything other than that kind of seemed crazy. (laughs) So what advice do you have, Sophia, for high schoolers? who may be struggling right now the way that you did about whether or not college is for them, whether it's for them in terms of they see like a career path that makes sense for them to get that degree, or maybe if they can even afford it, whether it's worth the investment. Mm -hmm. I feel like you really have to know yourself in order to know if it's a good idea or not. And you kind of have to like, detach from all the things that you're hearing and detach from all the outside noise. You kind of have to think like, okay, does this really make sense for me or not? Because I feel like we really know if it makes sense for us or not. It's just allowing ourselves to listen to our own selves. And it also, I think, requires a lot of support from your parents. Because I think that sometimes what happens is that There may be high schoolers who 
are listening to their gut and their gut is telling them "Mm -mm, college is not for me, but their parents pressure them to go to school. How did you convince your parents if it took convincing to support you in making this decision? Yeah, well, they weren't really supportive at first, to be honest. (laughs) They were not. I think what it truly took was it took a lot of conversations about a lot of open conversations. And I think you have to have open conversations about your point of view and their point of view, and you have to be willing to talk about it. Because if it's a type of environment where you can't even talk about it, it's not going to go well. But I think one thing that I think my mom did really well is that she created a space that we can talk about things, even if we don't necessarily fully agree on it. So she created that space. So I was able to talk to her about my point of view and what I saw for myself and the different opinions that I had. And then eventually she kind of saw this alternate way of thinking, alternate way of being, and she was okay with it. But I think having that space is huge, especially for parents, because if you don't create that space for your kid, what's going to end up happening is they're going to end up going against you and pushing away from you. And they're not going to want to talk to you too much because you're not supportive of what they want to go through or you're not supportive enough just to have a conversation about it. So I feel like it's really big to create that space, even if you're going to hear things maybe you don't want to hear as a parent, because otherwise it's going to create a lot of tension and they're going to feel like they can't come to you for things. Great advice. So when you graduated from Palos Verdes, Were you already interested in real estate or how did you become interested in the field of real estate (laughs) and specifically in the mortgage industry? So I grew up in real estate. I grew up going to open houses. I grew up with this all around me. I grew up learning about all the different types of properties, values and all that stuff. But what happened was at 19... My dad started to show, he started to present this opportunity to me. So he's like, okay, you can get your NMLS license. You can try this. We could see if you like it or not. And then we can go from there because he's also a loan officer. And he had to present it to me three to four different ways (laughs) before I actually listened. (laughs) Because at first I was like, no, I don't want to hear about that. But he kept on saying it three to four different ways. And then he showed me one of his checks and then (laughs) my eyes, of course, (laughs) widened. Was this like a commission check? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So he showed me one of his checks and then I was like, okay. But I think the reason why after like the third or fourth time I actually became open to it is because he's like, look, this is something you can try. I'm not saying this is going to be the rest of your life. I'm not saying you're going to like this. I don't know if you're going to like this or not because you haven't tried it. But I think you should at least try this to get this experience. And if you don't end up liking it, at least you can have this experience of customer service, working in sales, training, learning different things, learning how to put a file together, learning what actually goes into financing. So I saw it that way. And I think taking that pressure off of it was what really allowed me to go into it and then go through the whole journey of passing and failing my test and the whole journey that came along with it. So you mentioned this test, this NMLS test. What does that stand for? Yeah. So I don't know what it stands for. I think it's like, so how the DRE regulates real estate and realtors, the NMLS, the DRE. What's the DRE? So the DRE is a department of real estate. And so oh, how they okay. essentially regulate. I didn't regulate, know there was they, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a DRE and they regulate all the realtors and they do the licensing and all that stuff. So like the DRE is to real estate, the NMLS is to loan officers. So essentially the, they regulate the licensing, passing your test, having the licensing for different states, doing your continuing education. So they regulate all of that for, and you essentially, you have to pass your NMLS test to become a loan officer. So it's a really hard test to pass. Got it. I just looked it up. It stands for Nationwide Mortgage Licensing System. And it's actually only been around since 2008. Yeah. Okay. And it's a hard test and it took you three tries, you said. (laughs) We just did our Espresso Shots interview. Check out your notes to see if that's dropped. But Sophia was saying that it took her three tries. And if she hadn't passed the third time, she was going to have to wait another six months to take it again. So woo-hoo. 
<laughs> Third time's the charm. So your dad is saying to you, Sophia, look at the check. Look at the check. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a really lucrative career for you. Mm-hmm. And how has it worked out? It has been very lucrative for me. It has been life changing. But yeah, so it really took that. And the thing is, I wasn't expecting to learn so much from it. Like I've learned a lot from it. I ended up doing about 200 loans within the span of one year. And I ended up learning how to work with all these different people, how to do all these different loans, how these different programs work how to make a file work that looks like it's not going to work. You know, you learn so much about the whole entire system and how to work with different people. So I think it's been pretty cool to get to learn, not just about structuring files, but getting to learn about different people, getting to have these conversations with different people and getting to build these different relationships. When you say structuring files, is that like a loan application Yeah. So it's like structuring what type of program someone's going to be in. So let's say, for example, someone cannot qualify based off of their tax returns. Let's say they have a lot of write-offs and it doesn't look like they make that much income, but you look at their bank statements and you see their income and they actually qualify that way. So you can do a loan just based off of their bank statements instead, or let's say they want to buy an investment property, but they don't have any more space in their debt to income. They can qualify off of a DSCR loan just based off of the rental income of the property. Hold on. So the- <laughs> What's a DSCR loan? So a DSCR loan, it is a loan where basically you're going to purchase a property. You're purchasing an investment property. And how you qualify is there is a section on the appraisal called the 1007, and that is the estimated rent income. So you're qualifying based off of the estimated rent income. And the estimated rent income is more than covering your taxes, your insurance, your principal and interest, and if there's any HOAs. So it's definitely, it's just another way to qualify. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of T4C. And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.